Hello to all my fellow racers, I'm King Link and today we're going to be doing a last look and review of Project Cars 2. Now, this is my second of my humble monthly bundle early unlocks of January 2019. What a mouthful. And with a Christmas theme, those are Just Cause 3, The Ghost of Video Past, Project Cars 2, The Ghost of Video Present, and Wizard of Legend, The Ghost of Video Future. In addition, a small update on the channel. I have approximately 10 days left in 2018. I have five videos I believe I have to get done to finish 2018. Three reviews, including this one, two year in review videos. I'll talk about them when we get there. With that said, that means I'm going to be pausing the first look. So if you're looking for one, it's not coming until next year. And I like the new style we got with the first look. So it got positive feedback. So that's how they'll go in the future. But I'll resume them in the new year. Likely going to talk about Sonic Mania Plus there as well, so look forward to that. So thank you for sitting through all of that. If you want to come on that ride and see what's coming up next, consider subscribing. It'll help me reach my goal of 200 subscribers and maybe get me to E3 as press. That's another goal I have as well. Thank you for your time and back to the review. So Project Cars 2 is what I call a make your own driving game. Choice is king here and the player can design whatever driving experience they're looking for. I'm going to be driving in a tier 2 championship here, so please enjoy the video and I'll do my best not to embarrass myself, though uh, second turn I kind of screw up. Oops. As you see, though, the graphics do look good. I have the graphics a bit in the middle here, I set them to medium, because I'm trying to push for a higher frame rate, but they still look so good. If you watch my first look, you actually can see the second race that I raced there goes from sunshine to rain, and it's an amazing transition. Here we have just rain, but the game looks so good that I'm impressed almost every second I'm driving around any of the tracks. So enjoy the view and allow me to regale you with the rest of the game that you can't see here. Normally I talk story, but this time we're going to be talking progression. Obvious reason for the change is there's really no story with this game. When you start career mode, you can choose from any of the first 19 out of 29 championships to start from. From tier 6 to tier 3. Now there's no penalty for any of those choices, and it's pretty much what you want to choose. Once you do that, you can actually choose long or short series, how many races you race, difficulty of opponents, aggressiveness, you know, what you've seen me do already. Basically, set the difficulty and length of the event that you want to race, and then race it. Now this is the first race where I can choose a car, uh, which makes a small difference both in class and in performance, but it's rather minor. Now, win, lose, or draw, you can potentially progress to an international version of the championship if it's a feeder situation of championships, but otherwise keep going. Once you finish the championship, choose another. Now, this is where I get into a bit of a complaint for me. You're able to choose any other championship. You don't get offers and progression doesn't matter. You can just choose from uh, the current tier or the next tier higher if you want. You know, it's not a huge problem, but I wouldn't mind something a little more progression focused here. Whether it be some offers or a small amount of story or progression uh, setup. Now, while the career mode doesn't give a realistic experience for advancement, once you get into the game, you're going to find a rather solid racing experience. This game is a little more simulation heavy than I'm used to being more authentic than Gran Turismo or Forza as series, and it's somewhat similar to some of the Dirt series, you know, more rally than the numbered Dirt games. However, this isn't the strongest simulation I have played, but from what I've seen of, well, let's say, uh, let's just try this, Asiato Corsa, that is a much harder simulation, uh, much harder to get into as well. Personally, I think this game feels perfect. It's realistic, and after a while, I didn't notice the driving simulation really working against me. I'm just turning in good laps as fast as possible. But there's a really nice feel to the road, and the driving that feels uh, great here. Going onto the grass, as you'll see me do, is punishing, as is the dirt, sand, and any other material that's made to slow down cars. And the change from dirt, uh, from dry to wet as the rain progresses, at other races feels really impressive. Now the game feels great and I wish I could show you that but it's something you have to feel for yourself in my opinion. The thing is there's also a ton of options here. When I say make your own game it's not just the progression. There's a ton of options to set a game up here and you can make your own choices for almost anything. If you like realism you can turn on damage, turn off driving assist, you can actually do the pit lane manually yourself. If you want less uh, realism, 
Well, the small changes you can do, it's kind of arcadey at the beginning for it. Again, not really arcadey in the long run, but the big one for me was turning on, on the driving lines and turn indicators. Yeah, I suck at driving, I need a little help, but I do enjoy this game quite a bit. Now, it's up to you which options you find, and it takes time to figure out your settings. I wasn't really feeling the game until I was about 3-5 to five hours in, and from that point, I didn't have to mess with the settings anymore. I do use a steam controller for the game, and it works really well. Admittedly, if you have a steering wheel, no questions, use that. It's supposed to be better for that, obviously, and it has settings for it. I bring up the steam controller, though, because it's something that keeps getting talked about on a few boards I'm on, and the fact is, the steam controller works great. It's more about how you play, though. Don't peg the controller in any direction, and be a little gentle on the throttle and brake, and you won't have many problems. Though, there is of course a deeper look at the difficulty curve in my RIN review, which doesn't really get dialed in that well. But a short version of it is, I did 60% difficulty out of 120% difficulty, you know math is hard, but 60% difficulty on the Rallycross race, and I dominated. In this one, I dropped the difficulty to 40% because I changed disciplines and I wanted to show off a little bit more. And I'm getting spanked here. 20% was set for the race that follows this, and I'm unbeatable. So the difficulty setting does take a little too much time to set correctly, and I almost wish the game suggested what difficulty I should be setting it at. Now, let me call out a few more pieces, a little more rapid fire. Uh, tuning is really good in the game, not a ton of options, but the game also offers a really interesting mechanic that will help players tune cars through questions, and that's a nice touch. The track number is currently 53, I believe, with at least 121 layouts. That's a good number, and there are 180 cars in the game, which sounds high, but it's about average for this type of game. There's a good list here. Porsche, Lamborghini, and Ferrari are all featured here, and those are really nice cars. But for car guys, well, I would have loved w more than one Mazda. Toyota has about five, but nothing that I could drive on a normal street, and Volvo has none. Th it's just that there's some odd choices here, and you know, it's not bad in the long run. It's just really great exotics, weak selection for cars you might actually see on the road. There's good modes outside of the career mode, though. And I'll talk more about that in the ribbon review. But there's a few flaws that I have to talk about here, though. Now, the penalty system can be a little bit obtuse at times. I got a penalty for driving too fast. What? Well, it's apparently that I was out of the line or something, but just the information is a little bit odd. Though, I will say that the penalty system is kind of cool in a lot of ways, including if you pass cars by cutting the track, the game will actually force you to go back to the right position in the pack. Open wheel cars tend to have problems here also, when one of the two cars that make contact can get launched up in the air. In addition, there's not a lot of penalties for significant, well, let's call it bumping, but really ramming might be a better term for it, and it's allowed. The only thing you lose is a lap time, which in a race it doesn't really matter. You want to get the uh, best position. Finally, any issue with frame rate is devastating in this game. That's why the graphics look a little weak. I wanted to get a better, more consistent frame rate, as a frame rate hitch can ruin your race pretty easily, so I try to make it a little bit less stressful on the hardware. The simulation doesn't have a max time per frame, so you might simulate a second or two without a frame being rendered or a controller update, and that can destroy your race. That though seems to be based on a hard your hardware, not necessarily a problem with the game, it's just that it responds poorly to that. Honestly, that's really it. I do have a little more in the written, but Project Cars 2 is what you want to make of it. If you want a really in-depth racer, you can find it. If you want to play online, there's still hundreds of people playing the game at any hour of the day. And if you want to race any course with any car, it supports that. I tried a kart on Daytona, don't do that. Uh, there are time trials online, there's tournaments and more. It's up to the player to find the game that they want to play here, and for that, it's excellent. But personally, the lack of meaningful progression in the career mode does hold Project Cars 2 back just a bit. It's the one thing I feel like the game really needed to improve on. But I do give Project Cars 2 a 4.5 out of 5. Yes, that's a very high score, and honestly, it earns it. Though I will say the score is for the PC specifically. 
Now in console, competition is a little bit better, with both Microsoft and Sony having first party racing games as well as others that are there. Now maybe that score slips a little bit to 4 out of 5, but I review games for PC and Steam first, so 4.5 is the final score. Well done Project Cars, you've become exactly the type of racing game I want to play on PC. Though I am open to others, and I'm actually thinking about looking at Dirt 4 before long. And that's a wrap on Project Cars 2. Honestly, it's a great game, and I wanted to ask you guys a question. What's your favorite racing game, or what racing game should I cover next? Like I said at the beginning, I'm going to be rushing to the end of the month and getting out a ton of videos. So coming up next, I'm going to hit the last Humble Monthly Bundle early unlock of January 2019. That's Wizard of Legend. It's a strange little roguelike game, but I kind of like it. I'll tell you why next time. Until then, I'm King Link, and thank you for watching.